Hola, soy Katy, soy mexicana y me ha interesado en diferentes temas como sacar la comida chatarra de las escuelas. Pero he escuchado que quieren sustituir los productos azucarados, pero por productos endulzados artificialmente. Sí, pero la pregunta que me surgió es ¿qué tanta información tengo acerca de estos endulzantes artificiales? Me puse a investigar y descubrí que no se permite la venta de bebidas con estos endulzantes en escuelas de educación básica de otros países como Estados Unidos, Canadá, Nueva Zelanda, Reino Unido y España, entre otros. ¿Por qué? <ríe> Seguí investigando y descubrí que se han hecho estudios con animales en Estados Unidos y los resultados han sido trágicos. One of the first tests conducted on aspartame was a 52-week study of monkeys to determine the effects of aspartame on primates. Seven monkeys were fed aspartame with milk. Five of those monkeys had grand mal seizures and one died. Monkeys have a more of a reaction to ethanol, regular alcohol like vodka or scotch. They have a real high resistance to methanol and even though they were fed aspartame with milk, they still came down with seizures and, and, and one died of, I guess, cardiac arrest from overstimulated nervous system. Um, Searle went back and got another physician, a, a fellow named Dr. Wellington, and this guy sat down and redesigned the monkey study. In that same year, Dr. John Olney found that oral intake of aspartic acid could cause brain tumors in mice. I said I didn't think that this would ever reach the market. And they said, well, they were sure it was going to be approved. And I thought that we were on 180 degrees opposite sides. It turned out that it was approved, but FDA asked them not to market it. And they held it up so that there could be hearings and so forth. In 1974, the FDA approved the limited use of aspartame. Do you know why they were sure it was going to be approved? You said that they they said that it was sure that they. It was well, see, see, when I said I don't think it's going to re, re the mar reach the market, I was being very particular, but I didn't believe it was going to be approved because the evidence didn't show. They said it was. Now, now, one uh, very strange fact in all of that is that I knew that they had the brain damage study from Olney's lab that their own people had done, and we talked about the various pieces of evidence that uh, were problems. And I finally said, what about the brain damage problem from the animals in Dr. Olney's laboratory that your own people have gone and looked at? And he said, we don't think those are going to be a problem. Well, it turned out they weren't a problem because they didn't give them to the FDA. So, so here they had in their own files a study that raised very serious questions that they did not give to the FDA. That's a violation of law. G.D. Searle did not inform the FDA of this study until after aspartame's approval. This approval came despite the fact that FDA scientists found serious deficiencies in all tests related to genetic damage. Me parece increíble que habiendo investigaciones serias para la FDA, que es la instancia que se ocupa de regular los alimentos y medicinas en Estados Unidos, la FDA haya permitido el uso de endulcorantes que ahora se consuman y se vendan sin ningún tipo de regulación y peor aún, que se pretenda vender en el interior de las escuelas. Con este escenario es posible que nos digan en 20 años. Ay, usted disculpe, pero el tumor de su hijo fue causado por el juguito que se tomaba en el descanso. The National Cancer Institute recorded an impressive increase in incident rates of primary brain cancer since 1985 and possibly as early as 1984. So why the vast increase in brain cancer and brain disorders since 1984? I'll refer to a published study by foremost neuroscientist Dr. John Olney. He suggests one likely candidate. In 1983, the U.S. population began ingesting significant quantities of a substance never before used for human consumption. Artificial sweetener aspartame was quickly introduced to consumers. In 1984, 6,900,000 pounds of aspartame was consumed by Americans. This rate doubles by the next year and continues to climb into the 90s. When it was fully marketed for pop and everything by uh, 
July to August of 1983. Six months later, by 1984, the brain tumor rate had already jumped 10% in the United States. The diabetes rate had jumped 30%, and the incidence of brain lymphoma, a very aggressive and unusual type of brain tumor, jumped 60%. Sabes que los funcionarios de la FDA que autorizaron el uso del aspartame terminaron trabajando en empresas relacionadas con Nutrasweet? Common denominator for all of this, unfortunately, is money, and the amount of money that was flashed around um, induced people to drop the lawsuit against GD Searle and, and come work for the very firm that they were going to um, try for illegal activity. And that's what happened with the U.S. attorney. That's what happened with, with several people working for the Food and Drug Administration at that time. If they passed aspartame, literally, they were promised great jobs when they finished with FDA. Uh, and it was interesting, the main guy that made the decisions uh, that overruled them uh, in the Bureau of Foods went on to work for the uh, Soft Drink Association. And actually, seven of the key people that made decisions that kept NutraSweet moving through the process ended up working for one or another NutraSweet using industry. That's kind of an interesting side effect to the whole thing. I like to do well at things. It, it's important to me that if you're given an assignment that you try to do it the best you can. I'm afraid that some people confuse that with some sort of uh, single-mindedness on my part. Uh, the American Dietetic Association, the American Diabetes Association, the American Medical Association, goes all the way down the line. And if you were to see and read their journals and publications and see who the sponsors were and the people who were paying a great deal for advertising therein, it would make a little bit more sense. El secretario de Economía, Bruno Ferrari, y su subsecretaria, Lorenza Martínez, son los responsables de que se vayan a introducir bebidas light en las escuelas. ¿No te parece absurdo que tengamos que elegir entre niños con obesidad o niños con riesgo a desarrollar tumores cerebrales? ¿No existe la posibilidad de niños sanos? ¿O es que acaso nuestros hijos tienen que ser ejemplares de laboratorio? Algo que encontré es que en muchos productos que ni te imaginas aparece el aspartame o endulzantes artificiales como la sucralosa, que todavía no se conocen sus efectos secundarios, pero por alguna razón está prohibida su venta en las escuelas de educación básica de Estados Unidos y Canadá. Necesitamos unirnos. Cualquier esfuerzo es útil. Desde dejar de comprar productos endulzados artificialmente hasta tomar una actitud más participativa. Al final de este video encontrarás unas ligas con más información sobre este tema.